Hey guys, um, today I wanted to try and figure out, I wanted to check the voltages, which is the Zena voltage of a Zena diode. This says it's 8.2 volts. Um, now, if you've ever looked at a diode, a normal silicon diode will normally have um, markings on it. That you can see, kind of a number like um, I don't know, um, IN four double oh seven, uh, four double oh one. But it'll have a marking, and so you can look it up. These little Zener diodes don't. So when you've got a couple out and you've been playing around with a few, then you go to put them back in their appropriate bags. You don't know whether it's a eight point two volt. Or just a two volt. It could even be a a twelve volt. That's hard to see on the back, but on there it does say twelve volt. Yep, twelve volts. This is even a forty-seven volt. Now this is going to test the capabilities of this power supply and it will be the the first time that I find myself putting it into the mode where I can have 0 to 60 volts from this power supply rather than 0 to 30 volts um, see so yeah, what else have we got here? and we got a and we got a, a 30 volt Zena as well I've got a whole bag of them I, sent off with this mixed lot and sent absolutely lots so in you know in a way some might say well yeah you got that many zen diodes I mean, if you don't know what they are why don't you just throw them yeah well i can't do that i have to figure out which ones they are and put them back in the appropriate bags so i did have a couple out and it was an 18 volt one that i had out but i just grabbed these off the top of the pile um, and so, and it was the 18 volt and the 12 volts that I was getting mixed up. So, but I, these are, these are fine because these go from like one extreme, I mean, two volt up to 47 volt, uh, with, a, with a, a couple of few in between. Um, I think that's pretty good. That's a quite nice little range. Uh, the 47 volt one, uh, which means I'll need to set up two two lots of uh, wires coming out and hook it together and get the system to track so as I adjust one channel it automatically adjusts the other channel and then I use the combination of voltages so if there's 10 on here and 10 on there of course that's, I've got 20 volts coming then um, now the trick is with these after a little bit of reading and looking at a few uh, videos on, on the internet uh, is that you can test the voltage and you can go over the voltage and you won't harm the diode as long as you set your milliamps very low so i set up on both sides here on both these channels to 10 milliamps uh, which really is probably well when we combine the two it's going to be too much 20 milliamps could could kill the diode if I go up too high but what we'll do is we'll see when the, the system is drawing if I turn this one on we'll, we'll see when it's drawing about 5 milliamp there and 5 milliamp here the combination of 10 milliamp and then we'll know that that's the Zener voltage that's the Zener um, voltage of the diode which is what we want to be able to find out to put them back in the bag I've got this channel in first, channel 2. There's three channels on this. There you go, look, you see the other channel there. This is a 5 volt channel. Um, I'm not going to be using that just at the minute. And it's just easier to, to, to see here yeah, because it, it is nice to watch it going up in, in um, volts on there. I mean, it's, it's fine, you know, you can quickly add them up, that's not a big problem, but if you're checking out the 47, 
and you're looking at uh, 23 and a half yeah, it'd be so easy so much easier just to look it on there so when it when it comes time for popping it in I'll, uh, I'll, I'll connect this across when it's just the one side when we're just going up to 30 volts we'll just use one of the channels you know keep things simple and of course you know, two volts up to 30 volts one channel and then when we bring in the two channels to go above 30 volts uh, we'll use this meter as well just to give uh, an indication of the, the one voltage not split across two uh, like that okay let's get it going okay so here we go this is going to be the, the first way we're going we're gonna to do the two volt one I'll put that back there so I'm going to lose it I'm um, literally going to I'm going to put the uh, to the cathode side positive as we mentioned reverse positive on this and well we got it set to it's set at one volt anyway so by rights yeah, that should be ok so I'm just going to turn that straight on um, the overcurrent protection is on now I mean by rights this shouldn't be able to go higher than 10 millivolt but just to ensure um, I've put the overcurrent protection on so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dial up the voltage as you can see it's on milli there so I'm going to just move it up a little bit just to, just to get it going so that's gone to 1.2 1.3 this is a 2 volt and what we're, what we're waiting to see is we're waiting to see this we're going to allow it to go up to 10 millivolt and then that will be our or whether it's just an indication because now it's on 1.5 and we've got 1 milliamp 0.6 and we're using a six milliwatts as well so that's two volts and we're on 0.4 million 2.1 so there we go we got to the um, we got to the maximum output and it cuts us off automatically and um, which is good because we've protected our diode so we know that diode is going to work for another day down here I can see that it got to if I move uh, that across to there and if I turn this back on if I disconnect that now and just turn that back on actually we got to 2.3 uh, volts before that went to 10 milliamps so that's diode number one I don't know how accurate that is. I mean, I wonder if you could do it at 5 milliamps. Maybe I need to learn a bit more about the, um, the details. I just wanted the way to test the diodes and to figure out, you know, which bag they were to go into, basically. Maybe I take an 8.2. Have we got anything between that? We got a 12 volt, we got a 47 volt, and there's a uh, what we got here. We got 30 volt. So let's get rid of the 8.2 and we go straight to the 12 volt because this would be a quite a common one to use if you are building your own ZVS drivers, ZVS zero voltage switching. that's a great thing isn't it we had to switch on zero volts so same again we're going to connect positive to the cathode where is that other negative i'm going to pop that on there and this is still on it's at 2.3 now as you can see we're not drawing any amperage it's not drawing any wattage so let's uh click it back to voltage put it on the right one so across here, we're gonna just take that up 
I'm going to use this a little bit quicker on this thumb wheel. And just go. No, if I go back, did you notice? It just seemed like the ampage went to one milliamp light there. I don't know what that is, I don't know if that's the power supply or... Okay. And this was, what was this? This was supposed to be... Oh, 12 volts, isn't it? I'm looking at the bag behind me now. Maybe not too. So on 10... Now remember, even if I were to shoot this up to 20 volts now, it made no difference, it would just cut out. And just cut out. So there we go, we're on 12 volts. Just over 12 volts looking at this drawing. Now I wonder if that's really, as soon as you start drawing power, because there, and then just flicking it, I mean that is almost perfect. That would say that this diode um, because now there's current going across this circuit up until 12 volts there was nothing now we're on 12 volts and this is a 12 volt Zener diode as soon as you go above 12 volt threshold now we've got current being used I'm going to hedge a guess here and say that that is a better measurement of this diode we're going to see because we're going to try another diode and see how close that is and as soon as it moves the mark here if that's on the, the correct voltage rather than it going uh, above it like on the 2.3 or 2 before that did but that's because I was trying to go up to 10 milliamp I wonder if it is better just as soon as you start seeing um, the circuit being made and current passing that's got to its threshold and then going up that would just you know uh, I think they call this an avalanche diode as well, an avalanche it, so. Okay, let's just turn that off for a second. And we're going to pop that back in its bag because we know it's a 12 volt. Pretty damn accurate if the way I'm looking at that is going to be correct. So let's go for uh, what we've got here. We've got 30 and 47. Hey, let's try that 2 volt again. Uh, we're on voltage on here. So let's just go down to 1.1. Just dial it in, it's a lot quicker. 1.1. And then, um, come here, I'm gonna, uh, a bit fiddly, so put the two volts there. Positive for the cap again. Right, so let's turn that on. So this is the two, it says two volts on there. So I'm gonna wait and if that just goes, uh, you know, one little part. Three, six, two. And now we're doing a yeah, look. So 1.7. 1.7 and we got one milliamp. And at two volts we got four. Hmm. Hmm. So let's try the uh we did the 12 and 2. Well, let's try this 8.2 then, because 8.2, I mean, that's dropped it. 8.2 is pretty specific. So you think 8.2 then, uh, that this should be pretty specific on here. It's not going to be, uh, this, this is probably, hopefully, will be the closest one claiming to be so specific was it why I didn't mark these up these were already pre-marked up when I bought them um, so I did not mark them up Get on there. a little bit of black eye as a marker pen because I can't seem to draw without drawing over myself so there we go we got an 8.2 now so let's turn that back on and um, we're gonna is this up mm. There's a little bit of lag on that, which is a little bit disappointing. So right, now we're starting to get into a critical area. So 7.5, look. And we got 1 milliamp. 
So let's get it to 7.9, 8.1, 8.2. It was, wasn't it? So, you know, I'm, I'm going to say that this isn't particularly too inaccurate. So 8.2 volts, and we've got ourselves some current draw. See, the other one was bang on. The other one was 8.5, uh, 0.1, uh, 1 milliamp, sorry, 5 milliamp, 3 milliamp. Let's see what we do at the higher scale then. Maybe 10 milliamp um, is the scale that had been used to demonstrate. Uh, one of the videos I watched because that was their resolution, that was all they could do on the resolution. I got the upgrade pack for this. Um, <coughs> no, if you go and look at my other videos, you'll see there's a the upgrade. Uh, come here, what's this? This is a uh, Okay, this is 30 volts, so then we're going to get into the threshold of what this power supply can do um, in this configuration. So let's pop this on. Oh, 30 volts. So I'm going to wind this up, just key it into uh, 28. Yeah, we're on voltage, so I can just go 28. I can put 28.2 if I want to. And there we go. Oh, oh, we're probably better off turning it on. Uh, To go down a little bit, then I don't think it likes the shock. Uh, so let's go to um, let's go to 10 and just wind it up from there. No, it doesn't like that. No, oh, have I got this the wrong way around? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. We're still on 10 million. We've got over current protection on, which is uh. If I turn that off, okay, I'll turn the overcurrent protection off now. It's still set at 10 volt and 10 milliamps. So I'm going to see what happens. Hmm. So what was all that about? Now what happens if we do go over? So I'm going to go back to 28 volt. Because this is supposed to be 30 volts, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, the overcurrent. I wish it was staying was a little bit longer. No, so let's just wind it up from here anyway. Then. We can wind it up like that. We can also wind it up like this. Just going down a bit to where it said 1 and 14. Maybe there's some sort of like little glitchy bit with. But this should be able to go up a little bit quicker. Okay. Now we're coming into the uh, into that area. Twenty-seven. Okay. So. And there's our 30 volts. 0 0.090 watts. Remember I set this to 10 milliamp. So at 5 milliamps. I need to look at the uh, the data sheets. Why well, don't I have got actually any data sheets for these? I just look up generic Zenit diodes, can't I? I'm just I'm just wondering, you know, about that. But anyway, so you know we can safely say that that's starting to draw current now. Uh, we're getting current move across, so um, we got our thirty volts. I think I'm doing this right. I don't know. I could be doing it actually wrong. I don't, I don't think I am. I'm just trying to 
get closer to the accurate measurement of what should be what. There's a slight variation throughout the whole lot, but it is only uh, a, a milliamp or so, isn't it? So, uh, which is pretty good. Right now, the next bit. The next bit is the best one. Thirty volts. Oh, look, and the bag's got a hole. That's going to come in handy. <laughs> Now I've got two holes, one permanently open, a bit sticking out, so I'll probably need to find out another bag for that. See another another thing is if these started coming out of the bags, because these are pretty uh, pretty thin bags, if they did start coming out of the bags, at least I could uh, yeah, do this to find out which which one it is and which one it isn't. So now what we got left, we got this 47 volt one, haven't we? So okay, we need some more leads. We need to put two leads in here, obviously red and black and then we're going to tie this red and this black one together and then we're going to track we're going to hit the tracking so we have whatever I do on this will happen here too and then we just combine so we've got 20 here we've got 20 there that means 40 volts in total and we're also going to use these probes on this in order so we can actually see it going up in the um, in the voltage there too, yeah, as the as the true voltage. So, couple of links. Pop that in there. Pop that in there. Let's grab that in there. I'm just gonna just put these together, just like that, and tuck it inside itself, just to keep that nice and neat and out the way, even though it's kind of just done wrong now and yep, just put a bit of slime back. Right, so we can just chuck it down there. Will you stay out of the way please? Thank you. Okay, and now how are we gonna do this? We're gonna go we're gonna get our uh, we're gonna get our thing here and we're gonna tell this to track. So we turn the tracking on now they're both on 30 volts. So that's 60 volts we got there. And let's just check to see if we have or haven't. We don't want to put that on, do we? Because that's not going to... Oops, come here. It's not going to get us anywhere. If I turn that on. Here we go. 60.03 volts. 60 volts. So we don't want that that high. So let's just put that on there. And this was 47 volts, wasn't it? So we're going to go down to 12 here. And that'll be 24 volts. Does that actually work? No, we're going to put it onto the right thing, that's why. Mm. Okay, 24 volts. Uh, that might still be a little bit too high, but we're going to see. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to shove that probe inside there. I'm going to shove that probe inside. No, not inside the jaws. I want the jaws for the diode. There we go. And then I can just put the diode inside the jaws. <laughs> I'll keep if I could find the diode. I dropped them. I didn't eat them, did I? I'm getting a bit peckish. Yeah. What did I do with it? Is that it? 47 volts. There uh, so, so let's take this out of here. Just turn that off now. Just want to do this. Uh, let's just pop that in there. I wonder if I can just stick it down there as well. I am going to try and get it inside the jaws, but I'm not going to be that, that, that fussed if it's not. Oh, I know it's there, and we can all see it in there, can't we? So let's just turn that on. Okay. I think that was my connection I had with it, that's why that took so long. Um, so let's start spinning it up anyway. Let's just set that so we can do it one at a time. Um, 24, so we want to go to 47, so I put a straight on to let's say 40. Uh, 40. Ah, didn't like it. So it's the upper limit of 32. I don't know why it's saying that. Because I've got tracking on. 
Yeah, tracking's on. It's on, 32. Anyway, let's do it like this instead. So we've got 35 volts coming out. Okay, so in total over here we're on 45 volts. And this is a 47 volt Zener. Two milliamp. No, not quite two milliamp yet. Um, we have forty six point seven two milliamp. Forty seven. And that's is that going up? Four milliamp. Well, I suppose that is because if we looked at it like that, that is four milliamp, basically. So if we sat around about the three milliamp, uh, you got to remember that these are two combined. Oops, two combined. So that is four milliamp. Drop between three and four. So I've not got the connection in probably have I? There we go. So we go. So that's how we test. That's how I've learned very recently how to test the xenodiodes, which always have me baffled. Brilliant, eh? Oh, if you got this far, thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah. Bye, y'all.